Now, I mentioned the transfer portal is absolutely going berserk, and it is. But I think that we're going to see some changes coming here a little bit sooner rather than later. Because we're, we're in an era of change, right? Like, we've seen the pivot from conference realignment. Uh, the transfer portal itself is changing a lot with the calendar. We got NIL now. That's pretty brand spanking new. Who can transfer? Whether you're a graduate or whether it's in season is, is uh, or not in season rather, but during, uh, you know, different windows, that's changing. Where you can transfer to is changing if you're in certain conferences. How much you can transfer, that's recently changed. And Josh Newberg, who's National Recruiting Analyst for Here at On 3, put out a tweet yesterday that I thought was on the money and got a lot of attention. And I'm glad that it, uh, glad that it did. I'm going to read it here for you. At Josh underscore Newberg, follow him. He says, transfer portal needs to be fixed. Bars. This situation with Alabama will cause change. Another bar. He says, Bama is penalized because they made the playoffs and Nick Saban retired afterward. The last team to make a change gets shafted in the portal. There's simply no players left in the portal to recruit. Top available players are the ones hitting the portal from Alabama. If Saban retired on December 1st, this wouldn't be happening. Needs to be fixed. He's on the money there. He's on the money. We talked about it a little bit earlier in the show. But the reality is, like, for Alabama, if they were to be in the acquisition side of the portal, they would have done that if they had known they were going to lose north of 20 players. And the fact that they made the college football playoff and their season lasted as long as it did meant that players weren't hitting the portal from their roster. So once they were no longer in the college football playoff and their season ended, again, much later than everybody else, that's when you saw some of these guys leave. That's when you saw Nick Saban retire, which is the reason for all this portal movement. And uh, that's why they're now having to play catch up with their roster. And so what Josh said at the end there, I think is what we really got to focus on. There needs to be a fix. There's got to be a change. And the fortunate slash unfortunate part of this whole situation is if it wasn't Bama, I don't know if we're having this conversation around change. Like if it's Tulane, if it's SMU, if it's any number of other schools that don't have the brand power of Alabama, I think it kind of just gets shrugged off and say, oh, well, it's too bad. It's the nature of the calendar. It's modern college football. Got to got to work on roster retention. But the fact that it's a big brand like Alabama with a lot of voices behind it and around it, an iconic brand, an iconic coach like Nick Saban being sort of the catalyst for all this portal movement in some ways by his retirement. That's why we're talking about this. And I wanted to try and talk about solutions because I think, again, everybody can complain. Everybody can tell you what's wrong with it. And, and that's what we're doing right now. So we're a part of that. But when we talk about solutions, I don't know there is a perfect one. Because to me, I'm like, okay, the obvious choices are the, the movement of the portal window, right? We can move the portal window up. And say you have to declare before the postseason. Well, what's that going to do? It's going to decimate the rosters that have third string guys that they need for depth. They need for special teams, whatever. And they're playing a college football playoff game with double digit guys in the portal. Because again, you have to declare again, given this advanced portal window or moving the portal window up. You lose a lot of depth for teams still playing games. So that feels like a bad idea. You can move the portal window back and say, okay, instead of Portal Monday, we're going to have Portal Tuesday, the day after the national championship. Well, I think at that point, like you're still going to have these back channels working. You'll still have guys that already know where they're going. So just because it doesn't say not in stock on the website doesn't mean that it's not already taken care of and, and allocated somewhere else. Like if I know where I'm going before I even enter the portal, that's as good as me being committed and being in the portal. Does that make sense? So moving the portal window back doesn't feel like the appropriate solution. Here is, I think, maybe the next step for us. And I've heard this from other uh, folks in college football, and I think this makes a lot of sense. What might get us closer to a good solution here is shortening that early portal window. Because to me, the problem is the volume of players that Alabama is not allowed to pick from. Like when that portal opened up, Everybody and their mama was jumping in there. The problem also for Alabama, clearly, is that they have players on their own roster jumping in there. But if you make that portal window shorter, maybe, just maybe, we see less players in the portal to begin with, and we have a second window after the national championship game or at some point further down the line to where if you're not in that first window, 
you can't jump in until that second window opens up and maybe that's a more level playing field. Again, it's not perfect. I'm not pretending this is all encompassing. This is the only way we should go about it. But I think a good step in the right direction to try and level the playing field here would be shortening that first portal window. Let's let's not give them a month. Let's go like, let's go five days. Let's go a week. If I know I'm going in the transfer portal, I probably know during the season. I probably know close to week 10, week 11 of the season. That's when you hear some of these things even going down when it comes to back channels and tampering and all that like you hear rumblings about it happening in november so if you're going to the portal and you declare on portal monday you've known for a long time let's have it be a shorter window and have a less overwhelming number of players jump in in that first 30-day cycle also it helps coaches to where you don't get strung along by your star player saying i might jump in i might not jump in and then you go all the way up to the last day and they jump in and you're like well shoot now I need to go grab a linebacker. Now I need to go grab a wide receiver. Now I need to go grab whatever you just lost. And the portal window is, uh, again, you're, you're in kind of scramble mode. So I think that could help staffs. But not perfect, just an idea. Another product, though, I think we're going to see of all of this portal movement, and Josh and I were talking about this before the show. I think if you're an AD or any powers that be at the university when it comes to firing your head coach or keeping your head coach, the stakes go up if you want to fire your head coach. Because how are we seeing that now with schools like Washington, schools like Arizona, schools like Alabama, no longer having their head coach because they took another job and that roster just being decimated, just decimated. And we're seeing it in, in different, I guess, uh, we're seeing different quantities from different schools, but the point remains the same. Your coach leaves, you lose players. So if you're a power that be at a university, if you fire your head coach, there's a pretty solid likelihood that you don't just lose your head coach, you lose a certain percentage of your roster. And now the portal gives, the portal takes. So if you bring in a new head coach, the hope is that, that, hey, you know, maybe they're going to have a chance to bring some of their top players with them from their previous school. That's a gamble. That's a risk. So I'm wondering now, and this product might be that we see a little bit more loyalty, a little bit more patience for some of these head coaches. And I know that's a funny thing to hear because all we've talked about for the duration of the last year and a half, two years is, well, hey, look at what you can do in year one. Look what you can do through the portal. Sonny Dykes making the national championship early on in his career at TCU. The expectations go way up for year one. And I hear that. I don't think that's unfair. But I think there's also the other side of that coin of like, if you want to go another direction with a new head coach, you better feel pretty confident about what he might be able to bring you from a roster side of things because you're going to lose some guys. So stakes going up. You could see more patience, more loyalty between head coaches and universities. And it'll be fascinating to watch. But at the end of the day, man, like I said, there's obvious problems. There's very visible problems happening at very visible places like Tuscaloosa, Alabama, that script day. If it were somewhere else, I don't know if we see the same ripple effect. I don't know if we see the same changes that we're going to see here, but there has to be change. Has to be change. This will not be the case here. I'd be surprised if even next year we have the same portal madness of all these 30-day windows resetting and schools getting hung out to dry because of different things happening whether it's their coach leaving their coach retiring there's going to be there's going to be changes there's going to be changes to try and level the playing field and we'll look back on this and say Nick Saban's retirement started that ripple effect start this change hey y'all thanks so much for watching subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of the hard count also be sure to check out other videos on the on three youtube channel